So I've tested thousands and thousands of dollars worth of lasers, and this guy right here is by far the nicest laser that I have ever reviewed. This is from Thunder Laser in their Nova line. Specifically, this is the 2460, so that is, I think, 24 inches wide and 60 watts. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why this is the nicest and why potentially it might be worth the extra money versus the competition. All right, let's jump into it. So really the niceness of this laser comes from the overall build quality as well as the components that they are using with it. Now in general, it's a 60 watt laser tube in the back. And so you're going to be able to cut and engrave basically the same regardless of the type of laser that you put it in. But the enhanced build quality and features give this definitely a leg up over some of the competition. But then on the mechanical side of things, that's really where it shines. Overall, it's a nice solid metal construction. You've got a glass lid versus a polycarbonate that you might find on some of the other machines. I actually kind of like that it has has two different sections. So it has your overall section right here and then another smaller little area you can see through. But because it's got this little curve on it, they had to have this little metal section in the middle. So it was able to angle down. And then just from the get-go, when you first open the machine, you can just tell that it's nice. You have these nice struts that keep it from slamming up. Basically, once you open it at all, it's not going to shut. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that slamming on your head. On the movement side of things, everything is very beefy, starting with these massive stepper motors they have on the back. They give you the brand name, which is the Lead Shine HBS57. These are actually closed loop stepper motors versus what you might find on cheaper CNC's or cheaper lasers, where it's really easy for those to get out of step and get out of position, and then the machine doesn't know it. With those motors, since it's a closed loop, that's not going to happen. And just looking at them, they are very very chunky compared to what you see on some other machines this size or smaller. Now it's driven by belts, but these are thick belts and they are fiberglass reinforced. In fact, these are the largest belts I've ever seen on any type of gantry machine. That even includes things like a Shapeoko or an X-Carb CNC. These are wider and thicker than even that. So we have a lot of controlled and smooth movement with that. And the big piece that contributes to that are these roller bearings you have on the sides. They're going on a U-groove track, but those are completely sealed. So you're not gonna get any dust or debris inside of it. So I haven't had any issues with it getting gunked up. It's just been nice from the get-go. And the frame of the actual gantry are these really nice thick pieces of, I believe, anodized aluminum. These are beefier than what I find on any of the other machines. That even extends to the supports where it's holding the mirrors, where it bounces the laser around. I've definitely seen some companies kind of skimp on that construction because you don't think it is as important, but because this is moving around a lot and pretty rapidly, it's nice having that bulk to the frame. And just the attention to detail is top notch. Even when you're looking at this air assist hose, which all CO2 lasers are going to have, they have this routed through this small drag chain so that when you move it around, that hose is not getting kinked or caught anything. It's really smooth throughout the entire work bed. Speaking of work bed, you're 23.6 by 15.7 inches. And then you have a depth on your Z axis of 6.1 inches. And you can get to that because the Z-axis is motorized. So you can drop it up and down from the controller. And the work bed is double duty because not only do you have a honeycomb bed, but you also have a knife bed underneath that is removable. So you can kind of mix and match those beds depending on what you are trying to do. Now, because of that depth, you have a lot of room to have a rotary. And that knife design opens you up to be able to use a rotobox, which I'm going to do a full review of. It looks kind of crazy, but this is by by far the nicest rotary I've ever used. It's the most secure. This thing is just a beast. And that knife design in the bed allows you to include this. And because it is so deep, you have more than enough room to not only get this in there, but also really wide and thick tumblers or cups in here as well. And still have plenty of room to use the machine. Now that Rotoboss rotary does not come with the machine. So that is an additional purchase. And those are definitely pretty pricey. But other than the rotary, another benefit of the machine is this comes with absolutely everything you're going to need. If you've been looking at desktop CO2 machines, a lot of the times they are pretty much an all-in-one. So they're going to have your water cooling internal, they're going to have a compressor internal, they're going to have a fan internal, but usually those aren't going to be the strongest and the best they're going to work. But if you're really using your machine alongside of a business and you're running it a lot, eventually you're going to find some of those features limiting. So when you jump up to more of an industrial style machine, you're going to have a lot of those features external. So this water chiller is actually right 
beside me. And then there's a nice compressor for the air assist, as well as an external fan to suck out all of the fumes and smoke while you are cutting. With cheaper machines like from Ohm Tech, a lot of those things are going to be an additional purchase, especially your chiller, which can be anywhere from like 300 all the way up to a thousand bucks. In this case, this comes with a CW5000 and that is included in the price. So on the website, they basically say this is everything you need other than like two gallons of distilled water to get up and going. And they are definitely right about that. Now, there are two pretty unique features that this has. One is that status light over there. Right now, you can see it is green, which means it is ready to go. When this is running, it will turn red. And I actually found this pretty handy when I'm in the shop because I can just glance at that status light and see when the machine is running and when it is done. And the other feature this has is this air assist control. And this little panel goes into a valve that is right inside the machine. And what it lets you do is let you set both a low volume setting as well as a high volume setting for your air assist. You're able to set those both individually and you can actually test your air assist before and after to see if it's the right setting. That's handy because depending on the type of cut or engrave you're doing and especially depending on the type of material you're doing, you might need to have different settings and you might need to adjust it as you go. So having this right on board is a great quality of life improvement as well as one of those features you really only find on machines when you can tell that the company actually uses their machine a good bit and so they want to make it easier for them too. And just overall that's what I'm continually to find over and over again with Thunder. Now, speaking of Thunder as a company, let's talk about it for a second. You might be like me and really have not heard of them before. Now, Thunder's global headquarters is based in China, so these are manufactured in China, but they not only have a US-based headquarters and sales team in Texas, they have a US-based support team in Tennessee. And the support side of things is amazing. By far the best I've ever seen in any of the companies that I've worked with. In fact, they actually advertise their Trust Pilot score, which are those star ratings that are independent and you can really get a good idea of what type of company it is. Uh, the last time I checked, they were like five stars over like hundreds of reviews. And a lot of people talk about just how nice the support team is. Because when you get one of these, hopefully you're not gonna have a ton of issues just because the build quality is top notch but if you do you get lifelong support and that is on top of what i believe is one of the best warranties and that is at two years from the purchase of your machine now pretty much all of the laser companies and manufacture in china but a lot of times the companies that also have a u.s side will import them rewire the machines and then ship them to you everything is quality controlled and wired from the jump in china and then if you're in the u.s they ship it to california and then ship it to you and around the world the same thing with dealing with these companies i've actually found that usually works better just because you get the quality control from the manufacturer but then if you're in the u.s you get support from a team that is in your same country which is great now coming back to a few more features it comes with this controller which is pretty much standard with these style machines. What I like about those is they are just pretty much rock solid. Some of the nice touch controllers that you find on the desktop units, like maybe the Full Spectrum Muse or even like the Flux Hexer are nice, but they can be a little glitchy because you're just dealing with a touch interface on a piece of software. So these are just actual buttons, but you still get a display to kind of see what's going on. What I also like about that controller is you can pretty much control everything you need directly from there. And it is really quick. In fact, let me just show you really quick how you can just go from having no material in there to having this thing cutting and engraving. So I'm just going to open it up. I'm just using a 12 by 12 inch piece of uh, Baltic Birch, I think plywood. Uh, and I have the Z axis pushed down right now. And you can see that infrared sensor right there, uh, because the first step is going to be to autofocus. So you do want to make sure your material is between the sensors. Now coming over to the controller, Hit menu, I got autofocus right there, hit enter. And you can see this guy is slowly moving up. And then once the material gets past the sensor, it registers and now we are focused. Great thing about this is once you upload your design, so I did it in Lightburn, I brought it in here. Um, I can uh, go over to file and then this is going to give me a quick preview, the, it's not super fast, so it does take a little while to load, but the preview at least. Uh, but I'm gonna do this guy right here, I'm gonna hit enter. And then you can actually adjust the speed if you want to. So right now I got that at 200, uh, but I can change that there if I want to as well. Probably my favorite thing about machines like this that have a Ruetta controller, uh, you can hit that frame button. And once I do that, you're gonna get a nice frame around where it is going to cut out. And I'm gonna hit it again. You can see that there is a red 
laser dot. Uh, that's not the laser from the CO2 tube. That's just like a little red diode laser. And so you get a really good idea of where that is going to engrave or cut out. And I can actually adjust it directly on the controller. So let's say I want it in a different spot. So I'm just gonna jog this around, say I want it there. I can hit origin. That's gonna be where this starts from. I can hit frame. Now we're gonna do it right there. I've got everything turned on. All I do now is hit start. And then when I did that, the compressor, as well as the fan, which I have back here, those just turned on, with lights on, and that is engraving. Now we're done. And there we go. Another just quality of life improvement is their smart board. I think they're calling it their TL timer. And all that really means is they can turn on the compressor as well as the fan when it needs to. So when the machine is running. Other machines, you just manually turn it on and off, but because everything is actually connected directly to the machine, including this water chiller, the machine sends commands to that compressor and fan to turn it off when it needs it and then turn it off. That's just handy because you don't have to have those running all the time. Now on the back, you'll have connections for everything that includes power for your chiller and then power for your compressor and then your fan. And then on the side, you'll just have a couple switches. One turns on the overall power to the machine and the other powers up the laser. I do like having those two stages of power just on the safety side of things. If I'm messing around with the laser or if I have people around my shop and I don't want them to accidentally start this machine, you have to have that switch actually turned on for the laser to have power, but you can still have that off and then have the machine on, still be setting things up and getting things good to go. And then speaking of safety, you're gonna get kind of your standard suite of safety features. The big one always being the that it has sensors where this lid has to be closed for this to run. And there's actually some panels that you can kind of pop off to get into different areas. And I found if I don't have those completely shut, I also won't be able to run the laser as well, specifically actually the laser tube, uh, because I was trying to get like footage of the tube running, but I couldn't, uh, which is good. You don't really want to have that exposed while everything is running. So that is a nice safety feature as well. And then you have that great red emergency stop button, which is pretty much standard on any of these higher end machines. Now, another feature this has which is super handy is a pass-through and this is the pass-through on the front and actually that whole panel comes out you can run the machine with that out i would only do this if you know you're going to be safe with it because you were definitely exposed directly to the laser beam at that point but with that now you can get big material in there and there is a panel on the back that you can also take out that's actually with screws so if you remove that you basically have unlimited length on your material because you can take it through the front as well as the back and that's really handy now another nice feature has to do with the focus and this does it in a different way than i've seen with other machines. Some of the nicer desktop machines like the Flux Hexa or even the Glowforge, they use an optical camera to measure basically the distance and it gives you a pretty good idea of the thickness of your material. Some other bigger industrial machines will use a touch probe that is pretty much right on the laser head and will either drop the head down or raise the bed up and touch it and get an idea of what that distance is. This does it a little bit different. There's an infrared sensor just outside of both sides of the work bed and to figure out the thickness of the material, you'll just put it on the bed, hit autofocus in the controller. It'll slowly raise that bed up until that material breaks the beam and then it knows the thickness of the material. And this is super easy to use and I've really liked this route. It's worked just as well as those physical probes that I've seen on the laser head. Now one benefit of not having that touch probe is just that less weight and mass that you're putting on the laser head. So you're gonna get more acceleration from those motors because it's not having to push as much weight around. And speaking of speed, they're saying about the max is a thousand millimeters per second which is quick. And that's compared to more of like the five to 600 millimeters per second that you'd find the bigger industrial machines you might find from Ohmtech. So there are a lot of pros with this machine and there's really only a couple cons that I've seen with it. One just has to do with this model itself. I'm, I'm like squatting on the ground because I just have this on a little dolly so I can move it around. The bigger machines are on legs and it's more of like your standard laser height. So you probably would want to put this on some type of stand for going with the smallest version. And by doing that, you could probably get the chill as well as the compressor and even the fan all underneath it. So it doesn't take up as much floor space. Now, one feature that pretty much all the desktop CO2 units have nowadays are a onboard camera. You can see there is no camera built into this system. They do offer a camera that integrates directly with the machine directly from Thunder, but that's gonna be an additional purchase. And speaking of purchase, that potentially might be the biggest con. So this machine right here is $7,200 at the time of this 
recording. Now again, that comes with not only the best built machine that I have ever used, but also your water chiller, your compressor, your fan. It also comes with Lightburn, which is the best basic laser software you can use. Purchase that normally is an additional purchase, but this comes with a license, as well as the two-year warranty, the unlimited support, and even an hour of virtual training when you first get this machine set up. You can talk directly with one of those US support team and get everything set up, even if you've never used a machine like this before. So potentially all of those features could be like an additional $1,000 that you might have to buy from a different company. So there is more value to that $7,400 than when you first look at it. But still, it is substantial in terms of price. In fact, let's actually compare this to some of the other machines that I have reviewed on this channel. So the other big industrial laser that I have in my workshop is actually right over there. That is the manual focus 2028 60 watt that I have from Ohmtech. It's a bigger machine, but it doesn't have nearly the bells and whistles or build quality that this has. We'll also talk about the desktop unit from Ohmtech, the Ohmtech Polar, the Xtool P2, which I just did a review of. So all of these are going to be CO2 powered. The Thunder, as well as the bigger Ohmtech, are going to be 60 watts. It's going to be 50 watts for the Polar and then 55 for the P2. The big differences are going to come when you're looking at work area. Basically, the desktop CO2 machines are going to be a roughly around the same size in terms of the length and the width of this machine, but they will not be in terms of the depth. Now, the Xtool P2, you can engrave really deep things, but you have to buy an additional riser accessory to do that. But when you compare the work area of this to that bigger 60 watt machine, it is definitely bigger in pretty much all the different dimensions. Now you can get machines from Thunder that are the same size, but they're also going to be more money. So in terms of speed, this one is going to be the quickest with all the other machines in that five to 600 range. On the control side of things, you'll just have a button on the Ohmtech Polar, which is pretty much like how a Glowforge works. You'll have a few other indicators on the Xtool P2, but then with the Thunder and the larger Ohmtech, you get the nice Ruetta controller. And that's because all of these machines you can control with Lightburn with an advantage on the Xtool P2 side of things with the fact that you can use their own software, which is very user friendly. On the connection side of things, you'll have both USB and Ethernet for the Thunder and the larger Ohmtech, and then it'll get those plus Wi-Fi on your desktop machine. So this does not have Wi-Fi. You'll have to connect to it directly, which could be a drawback depending on how you look at it. But these Ruetta controllers do have onboard memory. So once you upload the file to run, you can always pull it up later and run it again, especially if you guys are making the same products over and over again. Now on the pass-through side of things, these all have pass-through. So that's going to be a pretty common feature once you start to look at units like this, and that's super handy. And then kind of the catch-all extras category is where this really shines. Because you're going to get the chiller, the compressor, the fan, the support, the light burn, all that kind of stuff all wrapped into one package, where some of the cool features like that conveyor belt that you can get with the Xtool P2 is going to be a total additional purchase. And so all of that finally brings us to the price. The larger Ohmtech, as well as the Ohmtech Polar, are about 3000 bucks. The Xtool P2, you're at $4,200. And then the Thunder Nova, you're at $7,400. So really kind of the question you're asking yourself, is this machine and the full package you get with it worth more than double than the base amount of the larger Ohmtech or one of the cheaper desktop units like the Ohmtech Polar. And that decision really depends on kind of how you approach these buying decisions. If it was me and I was buying one of these machines for my business, so the dependability, the reliability, the robustness was really important because I know it was going to be pretty much mission critical to be able to produce these parts, to be able to make a profit. I definitely would consider one of the machines like this because it's going to be one of those like cry one time when you make the purchase versus buying one of the cheaper machines and then probably needing to buy more parts in the future and potentially wanting to upgrade to something like this down the road anyways it might just make more sense just to get what you're going to need to start out with and in the long run potentially save money especially when you tack on the warranty and the support the value of those could be a lot especially when you compare it with some of the cheaper laser companies now you still might be more interested in a desktop style machine just because it's smaller and a little bit more accessible if that's the case we're gonna jump into my review of the Ohmtech Polar which is about the cheapest that you can get currently all right until next time go make or break something in a shot see you guys Thank you.